solving for stopping distance, including reaction time. So when you have a problem um, where you don't immediately hit the brakes, you have to react to something. So you're going to travel a certain distance during that reaction time. So for this problem, they give us a reaction time of 0 0.50 seconds and then a braking rate of negative 4.85 meters per second squared. Now we need to use this information to calculate the stopping distance of a vehicle initially traveling 95 kilometers per hour. So our first step is to draw some of what's going on. So we have a car moving with an initial velocity. While it's moving with that velocity, it's going to travel a certain distance. That's the distance it's going to travel during the reaction time, so before we hit the brakes. Once we apply the brakes, we start undergoing non-uniform motion because there's acceleration involved. During the acceleration, we're going to go from our initial velocity down to zero, and we're going to travel a certain distance. That's going to be the distance traveled during the braking time. So from all that, we can start to write down our givens. Remember to convert your kilometers per hour to meters per second and record all the givens that you can from reading the problem. So here we have our initial velocity, acceleration, time of the reaction time, and we need to calculate the distance during reaction and braking. We also can note that our answer needs to have two significant digits. All right, so now it's time to pick our equations. So if we look at our data sheet, you'll see we're going to need actually three equations. The first equation is going to be the distance traveled during reaction time. So there's no acceleration involved. It's a simple equation. The next equation is we're going to need to use this acceleration equation to find how long our car was applying the brakes for, because we're going to need to use the time we find from that into a third equation to calculate the braking distance. So at any point in this video, feel free to pause and see if you can work out the problem for yourself. So first, dealing with the reaction distance. This is the easy one. We just need to rearrange that equation to solve for distance. So we can do that by multiplying both sides by time, and we end up with distance equals velocity times time. So we go ahead and plug in our numbers, and we get a distance of 13.2 meters. Now, the braking distance. First, we're going to rearrange this equation to solve for time. So, the final velocity is zero, and I'm just multiplying both sides by two to move that two over. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by the initial velocity, and that's what led me to the time equals two times acceleration divided by initial velocity. Now we can plug in our numbers and solve and we get 0 0.184 seconds. So that's our stopping time. This is the time we're going to use for this equation. I didn't write this one out, so you're going to have to plug in the numbers yourself to see if you can get the same answer. So the answer I got was 2.43 meters. Our last step is just to add both of our distances together, and now we're going to get our total stopping distance and check our sig digs, our final answer is going to be 3.6 meters. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching.